Right. Before we discuss the tax implications on this page, let's just quickly take this one step back. Remember, if we look at our lessee's records, our lessee can either choose our exemption recognition if and only if, remember, if this is a short-term lease or if this is a low-value asset. If not, then our lessee has to recognize the right of use of our asset and our lease liability. Now, this section in terms of our tax implication deals with the right of use of the asset and our lease liability. Remember, we did discuss our operating lease tax implication in the first part of our recording. Then, when we look at our lessor, in our lessor's records, our lessor has to recognize either one, an operating lease, or two, a finance lease. In the first section of the revision recording, we have covered the tax implication of our operating lease. Therefore, this page purely relates to our finance lease. The tax in terms of our finance lease. Okay, so guys, I'm going to explain the lessee's tax implication by means of a very basic example to you. Right, guys, we are still busy with our basic example in terms of our lessee, where we have recognized our right of use of our asset to the value of 410000 a lease liability 400000 and credited bank with 10000 We are still within year number one. Now, when you look at the right side of your screen, guys, you do have all of this in front of you on your lecture notes. I just quickly want to work through this summarized table in terms of tax with you. For counting purposes, remember, in the profit or loss, we will deduct the depreciation. When you look at your journal entry, we've debited depreciation 102500. We will deduct our finance cost. When you look at the journal entry, we've debited finance expense 48442. For tax purposes, in our profit or loss, no wear and tear will be deducted. No tax allowance, guys. Remember, we will be able to deduct the full installment of the lease. Therefore, for tax purposes, the full installment of the lease will be 132000. Okay, so when you get back to basics in terms of your IS12 principles, look at the left side of your screen, guys. Your IS12, remember, we need to determine our current tax calculation and our defer tax. In our current tax calculation, we first have to obtain our profit before tax from our profit and loss statement. And then number two, we need to take out our accounting rules and we need to include our tax rules. In this example, our accounting rules, guys, will be our 102500 depreciation that we need to add back. Remember, we need to take this out. We need to add it back. And we need to add back our finance plus 48442. And we then need to include our tax rules. For tax, we may deduct the full installment. Therefore, we may deduct 132000 for tax purposes. Okay. Now, Right hand side, look at the table for me. For accounting purposes, in your statement of financial position, we will have the present value of our lease liability and the carrying amount of the right of use of our asset at the end of our year end. Therefore, in your deferred tax calculation, we have the right of use of our asset and our lease liability. Remember, this will be line items on our statement of financial position, the face. 
In terms of our right of use of our asset, the carrying amount will be the 410,000 minus the depreciation 102,500. Therefore, for accounting the carrying amount of our right of use of our asset, 307,500. For accounting the carrying amount of our lease liability, I've included the 400,000 minus the 132,000 plus 48,442. And our carrying amount for accounting will be 316,442. Okay. Now again, look at the right side, your rules, your table. What do you need to remember, guys? Our lessee is not the owner, remember. Therefore, the carrying amount of your asset for tax purposes will be zero. Our lessee is not the owner, important. Therefore, our tax base will be zero. Then the carry amount of our lease liability will be the amounts deductible in future. Now, guys, when you look at the above, we already deduct our cash. We already deduct everything. Therefore, nothing will be deductible in future. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. And we have a temporary difference, three, zero, seven, five hundred. And temporary difference, 316442. Now, guys, you can include your deferred tax. I want to work through the principles. Now, remember, for tax purposes, our lessee is not the owner of the asset, except if there is an installment sale agreement. If there's an installment sale agreement, our lessee will be regarded as the owner and then we will have a tax base included. Okay. And then an important one, guys, that we will look at this just now. When we have that included in our future lease installments, we will have a tax base in terms of that, that amount. And then two other important elements that you need to remember. When you look at the right side of your screen, we have our legal costs. If the legal costs are capitalized to the asset, remember, if we capitalize this to our asset, we will debit the right of use of your asset with your legal costs. And then that amount will be included in your depreciation of your right of use of your asset. And if it is capitalized, it will not be deductible for tax purposes. Okay. Very similar, guys, to the example we have actually used. And number two, if there is any commission paid and this is capitalized to the asset, this will be deducted for tax purposes. You need to keep this in mind that there will be a temporary difference. Focus, guys, please. We are now busy with the tax implication in our lessor's records if this is a finance lease okay therefore guys think about this one tax implications look at the right side of your screen for me first step we need to determine our current tax and then our deferred tax if we look at our current tax remember we need to obtain our profit before tax and our profit and loss remember this will now include you need to be with me guys this will include the finance income recognized as per our finance lease received from our lessee, this amount will be included in your profit before tax amount. Second important step, you need to take out your accounting rules and you need to include your tax rules. If we need to take out our accounting rules, remember now, for accounting purposes, when you look at your journal entry, we have transferred this asset out of the statement of financial position in our lessee's records. Therefore, for accounting purposes, this asset is no longer an asset of the lessor. 
Therefore, we will have to ensure that there's no depreciation, guys. You need to look at the time frame. No depreciation. Therefore, if there is anything, you will have to add this back. But it is important that you look at your timeline. Then, in terms of accounting, for in accounting, we have our finance income. Therefore, we need to take out the finance income. But for tax purposes, remember, for tax purposes, we need to include the lease income and the tax allowance on that asset. Therefore, we need to include our payment received. When you look at your journal entry, guys, the bank amount. And we need to identify if there's any tax allowance. In terms of our deferred tax, our deferred tax, we will have a line item, our net investment amount. And you will include your carrying amount in terms of accounting rules and your tax base, guys. Remember, our lessor is still the owner of the asset. Therefore, we need to identify what is the tax allowance in terms of our asset, and this will result in a temporary difference and a deferred tax. And if there's any possible Section 23A allowances carried forward. Installment sale agreements. When we look at installment sale agreements, and we refer to our purchaser's perspective, this will be in the records of our lessee. When we refer to our seller's perspective, this will be in the records of our lessor. The main important difference, guys, when you look at your lessee, for tax purposes, your lessee will now be the owner of the asset. Therefore, your same accounting rules will apply in your lessee's records, recognize the right of use of the asset and your lease liability. The main difference in your deferred tax calculation, when you include your carrying amount, your tax base, your temporary difference, deferred tax, and you include your right of use of your asset, your carrying amount, you may now include a tax base. Because our lessee is now the owner of this asset for tax purposes as well. Now, they indicate to us that we need to ask the following question. Will that this asset be used to produce taxable supplies? If yes, our lessee may claim the tax allowance on the cash price of the asset. Similar, guys, to our VAT. Now, what you need to identify in our current tax calculation, remember, we need to obtain our profit before tax. Now, guys, I'm pretty sure you are very frustrated with me by repeating all of this, but just bear with me. I need to ensure that you know this. Okay, number two, we need to take out our accounting rules and we need to bring in our tax rules. If we take out our accounting rules. Remember, for accounting purposes, this asset is now right of use of an asset. Therefore, for accounting purposes, included in our profit before tax is the depreciation on the right of use of your asset. Now, if our depreciation and our tax allowances rates differ, yes, you will take out your depreciation and include your tax. If they don't differ, guys, you do not do anything. Then the other difference will be our finance costs versus our total payment. Remember, full lease payment. Therefore, you will have to add back your finance costs. And you need to include your full lease payment in terms of tax. Then, when you refer to your seller's perspective, your lessor, guys, remember, very similar to your finance lease. There will not be no operating lease. We will recognize a finance lease. What you need to remember is that you need to identify that you will have to most probably recognize a profit or a loss on the sales transaction. In terms of your deferred tax, guys, what I want you to be able to identify, when you look at your 
les sources tax this column guys when you look at this column for me and you compare this column to the column in terms of your installment sale agreement look at the differences in our lease source records normal transaction net investment and include the asset because our lease source is the owner in our seller's perspective in the installment sale agreement we include our net investment and our net investment in terms of our tax base therefore there will not be any temporary differences identify these differences for me and know them please now guys when there's an installment sale agreement you need to read and you need to think about possibility of recognizing profit or loss and you need to remember that our purchaser our lessee will now be the owner of the asset right guys i've included steps for you i'm not going to work through this but you need to understand them please work through this apply them in your questions understand them and then extremely important know your tax principles your tax rules our last step step number 5 presentation and disclosure remember presentation on the face disclosure in your notes from a timing point of view i'm not going to work through this i have provided you with templates guys you need to know your steps you need to know in whose records you are and you need to ensure that your standard is properly highlighted underlined and flagged should they require you to prepare a note in terms of rfr 16 either your lessee or your lessor you should be able to immediately open your standard and identify what you need to include or you need to study the templates that i've provided you with Good luck. I know that this can be quite a mouthful. But guys, this is actually a very nice standard if you know your principles.